religion At the same time they sell us our wars I wanna know who the men in the shadows are I wanna hear somebody asking them why They can be counted on to tell us who our enemies are But they're never the ones to fight or to die in the balance that's uh, Jackson Brown haven't heard that one in a while one of my favorites and um, we are here with you uh, good morning it's a beautiful day out there in Lake County and kind of chilly but nice and sunny out there at the moment and I'm Terry Larson and I'm Pete the tax guy and this is Lake County magazine Thanks for joining us. Uh, a little discombobulated here this morning. Uh, the cable we the were looking for is missing, and we uh, couldn't find it, and the boss ain't around, so we're kind of running on empty ourselves, as Jackson would say. Uh, <laughs> so we got another action-packed day for you today. Um, it's been a relaxing week, I have to say. Well, first of all, let me <coughs> officially thank <coughs> Mr. Bob Blackmore for filling in last <sighs> week in your absence, yes. leaving me all alone. You're going to take me back to the jury duty experience. Well, yeah. <laughs> well part of our, uh, anyway. Yeah, that was really uh, interesting, though. I mean, I've never gone for jury duty, and um, the last time they sent me a notice, it, it just completely slipped my mind, and I didn't make it. So I felt obligated to show up this time, and I show up, and they find out that my case has been moved to the next day and I said well can I just serve anyway since I'm already here and already made arrangements for my guy to, Bob to come in and sit in with you and whatever and they're like yeah sure no problem so I go in and the case is a meth case and it's um, you know very interesting you know just to see the whole how the whole process works and um, the prosecutor was a prosecutor that I'm aware of through my work with Lake County magazine and I'd been given a lot of different information about this gentleman and when it came time for disclosures from the jury members potential jury members I had to disclose the fact that I had information about this gentleman that could possibly influence the way that I saw the case and because of that I was kicked off the jury <laughs> thank goodness otherwise uh, I'd be here doing the show all by myself yeah again. And, and and imagine if it would they said it would last for six days which meant three days three days so two weeks and uh, each week started on Wednesday so just imagine you're not going to be here Wednesday after no, next not. so if I had to do jury duty there would be nobody sitting here They'd be playing back one of our old shows. Oh, we would have had somebody fill in. No, or they could have just played back one of our yeah, old shows. But I will be here next week. Yes, and but then, then you won't. Then I'll be missing two weeks. <laughs> For two weeks. But I will be calling in with my reports. I'll take applications for co-hosts. Hey. <laughs> if anybody would like to try out for the position during that time. <laughs> hey, you never know. you God always got to have a backup. I, 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 is there something <laughs> don't I don't know? Don't be speechless. Is there something I don't know? Is there something that you should be telling me? You're the one telling me I need to be replaced. <laughs> I did not you just say said that. that. I said we need to have a backup person just in case, like you're going off to play baseball for two weeks. Hello? So you need to replace me for two weeks? 
Yes. You can't do this all You replace me for one day. Yeah, because I can't work the board. Oh, well, poor baby. You think I want to do two hours solid by myself? Nobody wants to hear me talking for two hours by myself. <laughs> really? No comment. Uh, thank you. <laughs> My point taken, correct? Yes, dear. Okay, thanks. So, yeah, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Can you uh, turn up my microphone just a touch? It's not your microphone. Your microphone's fine. Oh, it's this. Well, you need to change headphones because I'm, like, getting blasted oh, okay. in my ears. So either your headphones need to... How about at the box? Can you adjust it at the box? I think there's an adjustment there. It's all on you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I was adjusting the wrong button, folks. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and making me pay for it with my he bad hearing. You know, I went to a lot of rock artist. concerts when I was younger, so my ears are very sensitive. So, uh, what else is new? So what else is new? Right. Well, we'll get into it in a few seconds, but we had a tremendously interesting Measure H town hall meeting last Wednesday evening. Yes. Is that our lake report already? Most likely. Oh. But go ahead and finish your thought. Uh, so that we'll get into that real deep here in a few seconds, folks. Yeah, we'll go more into town H, and uh, then, uh, town hall, see, on Measure H. Uh, we didn't do much this weekend, did we? We had a lovely guest over for the day. Yes, on Sunday. And yes. it was wonderful, just relaxing and enjoying the new Roku, Roku box, Roku. which we can talk about yeah. in a minute. Well, but let's posted. take this call. Okay. Thank you. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, it's Scott with the Lake Report. Oh, I figured it was you. You're the only one who has the nerve to call in the first half hour. <laughs> <laughs> so the lake is pretty good. Um, we have a little bit of algae in the water column, which is normal for this time of year because of the wind uh, action. Um, but it's pretty nice, and uh, there's no uh, lake scum at all. And visibility is about, oh, down to about mm, a little more than 12 inches. Two temperature monitors said 62 degrees. But I suspect them both. So <laughs> yeah, because it was like 49 or something this morning. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. That, that seems awful warm to me. But when you stick your hand in the water, it doesn't seem that bad. Well, it could be. It might be 62. So I'll, I'm, I'll get a, a better uh, thermometer. And I have a short rant. Oh, okay. Go By all means, go ahead. All right, cool. Um, my rant today is about uh, Measure H. And um, I've been looking this uh, sample ballot over and uh, under the code enforcement uh, on 17H6, it says uh, that they want to go around and including buildings that are not fit for habitation, fire hazards, vermin, stench, lack of sanitary facilities, illegal construction rights away. They also mention um, cars in here, and that really kind of disturbs me because Basically, um, they say something to the effect of, let's see if I can find it exactly, uh, cars that are not operable. And I was wondering, you know, so how do they know that? Yeah. They're going to walk by and see a car. Very and good now point. what are you going to have to do? You have to go and prove that your car works? How yeah. do you do that? That's just you like the marijuana ordinance where they're asking people to prove that they were growing marijuana before a daycare center came in. Well, Does that make any sense? Well, if I can throw my two yeah. cents in here, um, I think it's like, unfortunately, what I go through with homeowner associations in lovely Phoenix, Arizona, where everything is a subdivision, where if you have a tire wheel missing or the engine hood is up or you have a couple flat tires, they're automatically going to assume the car is inoperable and therefore they're going to do something about it. You know, this is disturbing to me because Very. what if you have a boat? How are you going to tell if a boat, there's no flat tire in a boat? Are they going to go around and if you have a boat or a motorhome or a second car, you're going to be um, subject to these, whatever this person that they're going to hire, his job is to go around and give tickets to people in Clear Lake for things uh, that they don't even know. Like, if my, my motorhome is sitting there, and it runs fine, all right? Now, how are they going to decide by looking at it right. that it's inoperable or right. a problem? Well, well here's, I, here, I'm here, really here, disturbed by this. Here's it my concern, is if it's on your own private property and it's not a, quote, nuisance or an eyesore, 
Who the heck cares if it's operable or not? Now, if it's on the on a public road, I can I can understand their concerns. That's well, right. They're That's concerned right. about um, abandoned vehicles, and rightly so, because it does become a blight problem when that happens. But they do need to have some way. Uh, it, it, there's no answers with this measure. When they had the okay, town here, hall, here's, here's none point. of them could Let, answer anything. Let's have roads. Let's let them. If you can make roads, we'll hire an extra person to go around and clean things up. Right now, we can't even get to the abandoned vehicles because of our roads are so bad. And you sure. want to hire a cop to come around and give us a ticket. And I'm looking at the staffing for $230,000 a year. Thank you. Uh, training for $5,000 a year. Right. Um, I don't want someone who's had a $5,000 train job to do anything to me, ever. And uh, this, is, this is kind of the kind of thing that is a half measure, a Band-Aid on a Band-Aid on a scab. And here's another truth that nobody's mentioning in any of this. Do you know that half the roads in Clear Lake don't have a right-of-way, a legal right-of-way, or a deed to them? Roads go right through people's properties, and nobody's ever abandoned or quit claim deeded them. And this is, this is the truth. You cannot actually pave someone else's property. No. So what they're saying is a partial lie, people. This is a complete <clears throat> hustle. H is for hustle. Thank you. So That's what we've been saying all along, and the, 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 there's no uh, transparency. Vote for H. These people can't even fix the roads. Do you really want them to come and tell you if you need to paint your house? Yep. Well, you know, there's... <laughs> Government can stretch its arm, as we all know, way too far into our personal lives. And I realize that code enforcement is necessary in the city of Clear Lake, but they have to make it fair and reasonable and not start prying into people's private property. Um, uh, well, I, it, it, there are only people in, in, in Clear Lake that have money, have boats and motorhomes, and that's exactly who they'll go after. You'll need to store them somewhere. And this is just another... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Were you telling me it's against the, the ordinances in the city of Clear Lake to have an RV on your private land? It will be soon because, uh, you know, if the, the, whoever they hire to do this, they'll run out of money right away to pay. And that person will have to pay for them for their, uh, their, their load. And well. so basically they will have to write enough tickets to pay for their um, load. And so we'll have some trained little Nazi to come around and look at our at our at our life and I don't trust this particular council to do that. No, I agree 100% and we're going to get into it more later on Scott so if you want to hang around um okay. you know and well, listen that's in. My rant for the day. But thank it's you for sharing beautiful. that. You've opened a can of worms cuz now we have another call and this is our usual no call time. So it's okay. <laughs> But thank you so much. Yeah, but we'll, Scott, stay tuned because yeah. we're really going to get we're into We're going to get into H. it much more deeply. We've right, been studying it very Thanks. carefully. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Hello, you're on the air. Cheryl here. All I want to say is I want to hear about your week. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, we think that you should get Jerry Spittler on uh, when Peter's gone for two weeks. I want to hear what oh, she has to say. Oh, that's a great you idea. Great. You oh, really do yeah. want to replace me, don't you? No, 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 no. We're going to miss you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I will be calling in, folks. <laughs> Even if I'm on the pitcher's mound, I will have cell phone in hand. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, you I could will. do that. Yeah. I know. I should have done that from the courthouse the other day. Anyway, that pretty much wrapped up our week anyway, right? We yeah, it was, it, was a quiet, it was a quiet week. Yeah, it was. We didn't do anything real exciting. This weekend, however, we do have a lot of stuff going on we want to let you know about. Um, first of all, we have the um, Transition to Permaculture gathering that's happening over in Hopland at the Solar Living Institute. And John Trudell, I think, is going to be there. And there's going to be some other really good speakers. Rob Hopkins from the Transition Towns movement out of England. He's the person that invented Transition Towns. He will be there. Um, and we're hoping to, to get permission to video. I just sent a request through a back door, um, a back doorway to try to ask if we could uh, go down there and video. I have a crew ready to go, so hopefully they'll give us permission uh, to at least get this. I know he said that he thought that the main speakers were also going to be videoed anyway, but to get the flavor of, of the whole event I think would be really good. So that's in the works. And then um, there's a calling to all nations. Uh, the um, sacred water ceremony is going to be happening down at Sonoma State University, and we'll get more information on both of those up for you later. 
but our Saturday is going to be spent down there with the grandmothers. I think at least two of the 13 grandmothers will be there, and I'm hoping that there's going to be a few more. I thought so, you said all 13 were going to be there. Well, there was a rumor. I don't know. I know for sure two of them are going to be there, and I know they were talking to a third, so it's possible they could get um, at least half, hopefully, will be there. And the 13 indigenous grandmothers represent the 13 indigenous tribes around the world, and um, it's an extremely uh, sacred group of people, and we've been asked to bring water from Clear Lake mm -hmm. to get blessed. I know Clayton's bringing some from the north side. We're going to bring ours from the south side. And then we also have um, water that we've I've been schlepping around for how many years now? Uh, 17. From Sedona and the... Um, Seven springs, seven rivers yes. there, and that also was uh, pr gathered in a in a water blessing as well. So, I'm very honored to be able to carry that the, to them also. And I know people are bringing water from uh, Little Lake Valley up in Willits, where the Caltrans dis destruction is going on, and water's being sucked out daily on huge huge amounts and um so a lot of other places there's someone from tibet's going to be there in yeah tibet and then there's also other people and i'll pull that up later and give you the whole rundown um so anyway that's going to be a great weekend for us um we hope to go to the uh, transition to permaculture event on sunday it's also happening on friday too folks so I would uh, go to transition to permaculture.org and um, look it up and see what it's all about. It's 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 it can change your life. I mean, permaculture literally changed my life and the way I looked at the earth and our world and our neighbors. So, you know, it, it can definitely make a movement. And the transition training that w I received years ago also helped to enlighten me as far as how we can work together as communities and what we can bring to the table to make a better place. Sounds good. <clears throat> Truly, you're not mad you're going. <laughs> yes. He's a man that hates going to public events, okay? I he's, my, he's, my, he's my first hand, right hand man when it comes to the production stuff. So. <sighs> yeah. I know. You're so good to sacrifice yourself. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Terry and Peter? Oh, good, good morning. Alan, Looking yourself? forward to seeing you folks over there at the Real Goods gig. Well, uh, if they give us permission, the ticket price for us is a little too high for us to pay to go in and film. So I don't want to go work for th two, three days and have to pay the ticket price. So um, I would have, um, We're hoping I'll, someone will get back to us. Um, okay, and I'll, I'll put some pressure on you. <laughs> I, I don't think it'll be too difficult to get you in. Well, it's just they have no uh, contact phone number on the website, and I sent two emails already in detail, d detailing everything we'd like to do. And I'll, I'll call you off the air and give you John's number. Okay. I don't know if John's involved in this directly, though. That's a thing. Okay. It's, it's an outside event. Well, he does own it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, go, going back to uh, car abatement, um, when, when Real Goods first moved there out of the store in Ukiah, um, we put Cadillacs out there and planted trees in them as an art project. Right. And damned if somebody didn't call in and wanted the cars need to be moved. We have an ordinance that does not allow cars to be left abandoned. And it took almost fifteen thousand oh dollars in court to allow those Cadillacs to stay there as an art project with the trees growing out of them. Right. I mean, well, one of them was on its you know tail, its nose, and the other one was on its tail, and one was sideways. Oh man! So and what it, happened to them? And um, you know, I I didn't look to see if they were still there last. They're not time, there. I've never seen them. I've been yeah. going up there for four years. But then, um, yeah, yeah, this was well back when they first first moved down there. It's like yeah. back in the late 90s yes, and um, they're gone you know there's other projects too like the uh the interwoven willows mm -hmm. they got a disease and they they weren't able you know there's been many projects that uh, the lagoon doesn't have that little floating island that it used to it was um there's a little windmill on it and what it does is if you have these uh a, a little um pool pond Mm -hmm. bigger than two acres, what, what it does is it, it cruises around the whole lake and it, it, it keeps it clean. Mm -hmm. And it also is um, a, a way to grow vegetables on a, a roving platform hmm. on the water. And, and are they using there. it up at the pond now, do you know? Because I've never seen that either. Yeah, that's not there either. <laughs> All oh. these little technologies that, that I, <laughs> I, I find very interesting and intriguing and they just seem to disappear. <laughs> Oh, wow. But, yeah, that car abatement thing was, was pretty Yeah, reckless. that's just so ignorant. It's an art piece. You could tell it's an art piece, and but what? 
<laughs> I guess maybe, maybe somebody else got a baited, and they're like, well, damn it, if they're going to take my 15 cars, I'm going to at least get that one. <laughs> so, True enough. Never, never underestimate the power of animosity. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the truth? And, they, you know, at, back in those days, they, they weren't exactly friendly to that particular type of uh, mentality either. So. Oh, no, that, that was... Uh, the, the real goods has always been on the, the leading edge of that when uh, in fact um, we just looked at a reader's digest article from a 1953 mm-hmm. edition up in uh, Riviera Heights and and it, they were disclaiming um, how organic gardening was going to destroy America <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the petrochemicals were the way to go. If you want yeah. high-quality produce food in, in mass amounts, organic gardening is not the way to go, and we're finding out now it's the opposite. Right, right. Yeah, it was just... Uh, it, uh, um, remember, remember the Ortho Grill commercial where mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember the character that bit into that red, ripe tomato? If you want to grow right, you grow with ortho. Oh, yes, yes. And well, I prefer to forget those type of commercials. Huh? Yeah, ortho, and, and that was when Roundup first started coming through. Mm-hmm. So you're hyper-generating your plants, and you're poisoning everything else except your food, except you're poisoning your food, too. Right, right. So hopefully um, you'll get that ticket. <laughs> it's going to be a great show. Well, I'm just uh, saying a prayer. Well, it's not me; it's my crew. You know, I will. I won't be there on Saturday because I'll be down at the grandmother's event. But um, I need to get my crew in there so they can video the event. You know, that's it's very good to share this, especially when they're talking about changing communities. A community TV show would be the best way mm-hmm. to do that. <laughs> hey, and one of the things I'm going to be um, advertising for down there and push forth is Santa Rosa Sonoma decided not to do the Amgen tour. Oh, I know. Why That's don't something. we bring it to Real Goods and Lake County? We just yeah. did the pedal around the pedal. Every, yeah. Everything's in place. We have the yeah. right elevations and we have the distance to No, qualify. I'm with you, man. I'm definitely with you. But we got another caller holding, so we we'll talk that about that some more. We got that bike Thanks. tour here. Exactly. It's a good Hello? idea. Thanks. Peace. Hello, you're on the air. I am? Yeah. Hey. You are. Those uh, Cadillacs are definitely still there, and they've turned into a beautiful little grove right there along the... Oh, seriously? I'm going to go look when I go down. Right along the highway. I, I know during, oh. the, during the last event there, I went down and took a look at it, and they had them uh, taped off, the, the little grove that they've created there by the freeway. They had it taped off for some reason. Wow. Okay, you guys got me confused. Where the heck is this located? Solar Living Institute, real goods. The, the Cadillacs? Yeah, that's why we got to look for them when we oh, go down this weekend. I don't remember yeah. seeing that. Yep. Yeah, yeah the little trees that they planted inside of the Cadillacs are now big, giant trees. They just probably mm-hmm. grew through the car, so you can't even see them anymore. Yeah, the oh. bodies are down there. You can still see the cars, but they've... You're talking about the car bodies, not physical yeah. bodies, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Lake County. You never know. <laughs> no, point. that's not Lake County, but that's you never know. That's a good point, yeah. Northern California. Have a good one, guys. I'll talk thanks, to you later. Sweetie. All right, Take thanks. Take care, and thanks for last Bye. week. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I wanted to let you know about the Cadillacs being there still. <laughs> it is neat. Parallel on the highway. So Excellent. I'm going to look for towards the highway, you'll see them. They're great. They're like giant planters with big trees in them. Unbelievable. That's but so the lovely. other reason I'm calling is to thank you for bringing up about the uh, fluoride in our uh, California wines. Yes. Uh, which got me thinking a lot more about both the wine and fluoride in our water. Okay. And so because i got to give credit where credit is due, I researched my local water company, um, which is Golden State, which I've never had anything good to say about. <laughs> but I can say this. They do not put fluoride in our water, the good. raw, uh-huh. and they don't use chloramine, oh, which good. a lot of municipalities are using that stuff, and it's horrible. Mm-hmm. And the other thing, uh, although the state does not require it, they do test for mercury both at the source and at the outflow oh. at least once a year. And there has been no uh, no dangerous levels of mercury in the delivered water or the water that they're taking from Excellent. the uh, lake. That is and good. Because the mercury is down in the mud and the organisms yeah. eat it, and then it goes up the food chain through biomagnification, and so then the fish are dangerous. But the water itself, 
isn't right. as far as, well, as, that's, far as that goes. I had heard that from a hydrologist in Ukiah a couple years back, it's and she nice said to have it the water itself doesn't have the mercury in it, but of course that's where the cyanobacteria is. So uh, a lot of the experts say that that does not get filtered out, and neither is that tested for. So that's something to always keep in mind when you're getting your water from the lake. And right. then the second thing is that mercury is a cumulative effect. Exactly. So whatever they say is a safe level, to me, doesn't ma matter because... It, it's not safe in the sense that it, every time you ingest it, it's building up inside your body. That's so, right. You know, that's, that's, right. that's just the common sense stuff. And there that's why I still drink bottled water. Yeah, <laughs> but there I'm are glad certain doing chelated uh, processes that mm. can flush it out. But if you're not doing that, it doesn't Yeah, it actually doesn't they away. say um, that, oh, God, what's that, what's that herb that you use in Mexican food? It begins with a C. Um Cilantro. Oh, cilantro. They yeah. say that will clean mercury out of your system. You just juice it and drink it. And Ooh, yeah. Good to know. Very simple, yeah. Great. All right. Well, that was it. Thanks. Cool. Well, Thanks. thank you. All right. Have a good day. Bye. All righty. Where were we? Uh, should, <laughs> I, should, I, should I read our little disclosure? Yes, please. Since okay. you've got it in front of you. Yes, I can actually read that from a distance without my glasses. Oh, That's kind of cool. Yes. I can anyway. read anything without Please remember that the opinions expressed on this or any other KPFC program are the opinions of the speaker and do not necessarily respect, represent the views or opinions of KPFC LCCR its members, staff, or supporters. These are the opinions and views of the speaker only. In our case, speakers. That's what we've done. So, where Thank would you, you like... Thank you for sharing that. I thought it would be nice, so... Yes. Where would you like to move on to? Uh, what's on your list? I have lots of lists. Well, I'm afraid if we start the Measure H discussion, that's all it's going to be. Oh, we could talk about Mr. Farrington. Oh, do we have to? I think so. Okay, we will. Anthony Farrington, our esteemed supervisor, announced uh, on Facebook... On Facebook, no less. ...that he is no longer mm. running for assemblyman. And I just think it was very interesting how he chose to disclose it. Uh, I don't think any news releases were issued to any media sources. We did get permission to run the, his Facebook yeah, statement, Yeah, but there was n not the, none of the other media that we read on a daily basis uh, reported a news release from Mr. Farrington at all. It was strictly a Facebook announcement, which right. to me as an elected official is kind of strange. It's, it's very strange, but you know what? If he feels that's the best way to reach his constituents, then he's doing the right thing for himself. I can't fault him for that. Uh, yeah, so that's... I'm sorry. I just I'm just i biting my tongue. Well, just remember you're on camera, so don't make it bloody. <laughs> well, I'd like to know if anyone out there that's listening to us, all one or two of you, is uh, actually read his Facebook release or read it on our Facebook uh, page because we are on our website. Yeah, I yeah. because uh, it sounded like a Washington senator. He's speech. a politician. What do you expect? He gave a politician speech. Yeah, but he got ragged all over the blog because I of it. I know, but that's okay. You all know right. what? I'm thinking he made the right decision. I don't think he, he could did. have gotten elected. There's four other candidates, uh, two of which come out of Napa. One is out of Sonoma. I don't think a lowly Lake County representative would actually <laughs> a lowly Lake have County much of a chance because Lake County has such a horrible report no, card I, I, on what it has provided during his term. And I think everyone out there will agree that he probably didn't have a very good chance of winning. But and I'm sure that's why he right. pulled out. And that's fine. I'm not and to be honest, Lake County needs him if he really is going to do something. We need leadership here. We need people who are going to do the right thing for the citizens, and that hasn't happened. So, Tony, now's the time to step up and show people what you're really made out of. You're still young enough to run later on or for any other position, and you do a good job here, and you won't have a problem like that. I'm, and I'm not in disagreement with anything you just said. Okay. I'm just a little bit taken back by the wording of his announcement. Mm -hmm. Instead of just, guys, the race is congested. Uh, I don't feel I have a great chance of winning. I'd rather take all of my resources and my effort and concentrate it on Lake County in l instead of an election, which I may or well, may not Well, that's what chance. he said, basically. No, nah, he... Was <laughs> no, he did not say that at all. Well, that's what it sounded like to me. Maybe he, he I was reading between the lines, you know. I don't he, know. Yes, he said, 
I'm here to serve Lake County. I want to stay here. My roots and are here. And he named off quite a few serious issues that he felt needed to be addressed absolutely. here in Lake County, which he was absolutely correct. Which have needed to be um, addressed for the last 20 years. Well, exactly. <laughs> it would have been nice if he started earlier, yeah, but no, hey, anyway. that's the way it is. Um, we also have somebody holding, so I'm sorry, go to the phone that. line. Hello, you're on the air. Hello, did you give up on us? All right, we'll go to the next line. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, this is Valerie and Susan. Hey, how are you, ladies? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Ooh, we're Thanks being double so teamed. Glad to hear from you. Hi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. morning. So, welcome to Lake County Magazine. Um, these are the young ladies that are uh, producing the event down at Sonoma State University this Saturday. Okay. And Valerie Houseman and Susan. What's your last name? Coleman. Coleman. Okay, great. Nice to meet you both by yeah. voice at this point. <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Valerie, you want to start off by letting people know about the event and what's included in it and what's happening? Sure. Um, it's this Saturday, October 12th, 11 a.m. The ceremony starts, and it is till 4 o'clock. It is uh, an event, um, a ceremony that uh, we have uh, two of the International Council of 13 Indigenous Grandmothers coming. Are you familiar with them? Yes, I am. That's uh, that. We were wondering if they had added any more because we had heard different rumors that everybody was coming and some more. Oh, were really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's out there in the yeah, waves. It is. No, it but is. it's, um, we, we don't know, we know that Grandma Aggie's coming. And Grandma Mona, and, and Grandma Aggie's from Oregon. She's 90 years old, uh, and she's just an incredible woman, um, both of them. Uh, Grandma Mona's from Hopi. She's coming in from Arizona. Oh, she's Hopi? Oh, Yes. Man. Okay, that's uh, that's my home, home, uh, home tribe. Well, I started actually with the people down in Florida. Uh, Sem wow. The Seminole tribes. That's when I first got in introduced to Native American knowledge and uh, wisdom. Okay. And then the Lakota Souk used to come down there and do sweat lodges. And then I went to Arizona and had Hopi relations. So, Oh, how wonderful. Yes, my life's been very blessed that way. Always had the red road around me everywhere I turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's this is, seems to be a culmination of all nations. Um, and also celebrating water and belonging Wonderful. and uh, raising our consciousness around water and, and how waters, you know, just by prayers, you could see, uh, like Dr. Emoto um, did mm -hmm. some scientific research to show that when you're when there's different beautiful things going towards the water that it changes the, the stru molecular structure, and he was able right. to capture that. Right. So we do believe... Um, I know, like Grandma Aggie, she uh, does a salmon ceremony up in Oregon. She brought that back um, from, you know, years ago and uh, started doing that every year. And now the salmon are thriving there in the, in the I think it's the Rogue River. Um, so we'll have Grandma Mona and Grandma Aggie. And then we have um, some... Como dancers from all over that are going to dance together, which is really beautiful. Um, we have the Eight Temple Tuco to represent Tibet. Hmm. We have um, Ross Keen that represents Africa. Mm -hmm. And then, so in that sacred hoop, it was important to honor all races. Absolutely. So we all fit in, in, all, in all those colors. It's a rainbow. Yeah, the yeah. rainbow, <laughs> the rainbow warriors is the absolutely is the, the the prophecies, and that that seems to have been coming up around this whole thing. It's just a lot of magical things happening. I mean, I was in here in the center in Guerneville, um, where the Center for Sacred Studies is, in the office of the grandmothers, and an Ecuadorian shaman came in, and he changed his ticket to come, <sighs> um, come and be part of the ceremony. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. They're being they're being called from everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. We mm. even have a, a traditional shaman from Okinawa flying in from Japan. Wow. 
It's pretty amazing what's been happening. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah very exciting. Uh, well, these are the times. You know, we have to step up and take yeah. responsibility for what we've created and create a better place now. So when the, when it is the time to make that move, we'll be prepared. And I just think that us getting together and the knowledge that's going to be shared is the first step in that whole belonging and becoming one. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a lot of the dreams of the the local tribes and the. Um, I oh, mean, yeah. that Grandma Mona had come out. It was really coming to full circle because she had came she come out to three years ago to the Roundhouse. We were on the radio show of uh, yesterday. Um, uh, one of the well, his name's Jim. Mm hmm. Jim Brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tribal Voices Radio. Yes. And, uh, LM. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he had said that you know she'd come out and uh, put prayers all around this area. You know, been requested to come out. Awesome for unity of the tribes, but unity, you know, the unity of all people seems to be what's happening on this day on October twelfth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have you heard of Chief Golden Light Eagle? He's not a, yet, not yet. No, but I believe I met Grandmother Mona at Earth Dance that same year because I remember the ah. Elders Council. I think she was there. So yeah, yeah. So looking yeah, forward he, to reuniting there. And yeah, tell us about the chief now. What tribe is he? He's Lakota. Oh, wonderful. And he. Um, He's coming back. He's coming out here. He's driving out this morning from Nebraska. Oh, good for him. Yeah. And uh, what else am I missing? Uh, oh, one important thing to tell people if they're coming is to bring something to sit on in a blanket. You know, it, it's, it layers because it's outside on the lawn, commencement lawn at Sonoma State, and to bring a lunch because they don't. There's there's no food sold there. Um, okay. To bring a snack and that and lunch, and uh, bring some water. We have water coming from all over the world. We join together, join together um, into uh, one container that we can bless the water, and then um, you can. You're welcome to take some back with you wherever you are, and that's where we came up with this that we got. In, uh, the, the people in Willits got in touch with us, so I was glad that you were able to help them to um, get the message of the wetlands and Willits, and that it's going to. I think it's going to work out where they're going to bring some water down to us. And that would be bring lovely. Some back to them. That yeah. would be lovely. Well, what I'm going to do is bring the water from Sedona from the Seven Rivers, and um, I'm going to empty that into right. your water, and then fill the same bottle back up with what you let me take home. So. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll have wonderful. My, my little bottle there. Definitely. And bring a drum if you have a hand drum. Oh yeah, we've we're got gonna plenty do the of drums. Yeah, and I I'd like just to reiterate that this is a this day is a call to all nations of the four directions to come in celebration of our first relation water and our belonging to each other as brothers and sisters through our first medicine, which we're made up mostly of, the earth is made up mostly of, we're made up mostly of, and it's our connector to each other. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And um, it's a free event. I'll reiterate that to people. Free. Okay. Yeah, free event. There is a $5 parking fee on campus. Okay. Um, so if you want to carpool in, you know, cut down on that that cost, but there is a $5 fee. The event is free. If for those who are not familiar with that area, what would be the major cross streets where the parking lot would be at? Okay, if, you know, coming from, an, well, it's off of 101, you want to take the Rohnert Park Expressway east, and you drive, and it actually dead ends into Petaluma Hill Road, but towards the end there, on the right-hand side, Green Center, because people are going to be parking in the four different parking lots for the Green Center. It's parking lot L, M, N, and O. So you make a right into that from uh, Rona Park Expressway into those parking lots. Okay. And then there's a walking bridge. You don't have to walk on the road. There's actually a walking bridge that will 
Uh, it's about a five-minute walk, and you walk on a walking bridge over a creek, and it'll lead you to Commencement Lawn. Perfect. All righty. Well, thank you so much for checking in with us. We really appreciate it, and we're so looking forward to the event. Uh, we're very grateful for you, uh, for you allowing us access for video and interviews. Uh, very interested to talk to these people. Oh, and there is a musical guest, too, correct? Yes, we have Hip Hop Medicine Nation. Yes. Hip Hop Medicine Nation is um, a group of conscious uh, hip hop. A lot of them, um, you know, they know that, I mean, there's 30 years ago that hip hop was started to be one that brought people together. Right. And, and it kind of got shifted. And so this is the original message. Uh, and, and we started a relation with them when Grandmother Florida Mayo came out, when oh. the Mayan grandmother, oh. and she came to meet with KRS-One in Berkeley, and she laid down the prayer before they started there. Uh, he, he's a beautiful speaker. I love him. Um, he's one of my favorites. Like, when he first came out, uh, I've been a fan since then. So that's why, you know, when I mentioned that, I thought he possibly might be there, but I guess Well, we not. don't know. Oh, we don't know. So they, it's, it's like a consortium of a bunch of different artists that come together for conscious hip-hop, basically. And in dealing yeah. with the spirit, yeah. So we, it'll be a surprise to see who comes out, really. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's really a prayer that they know that, you know, it's of unity and peace of all people. You know, mm -hmm. the same mission. Mm -hmm. We also have Northern River Bear Drummers, which is an intertribal um, group. And uh, we're honoring on that day, I want to say, the, uh, a spiritual leader, uh, Lucky Panola. Oh, um, okay. And he... Um, he passed away in this while we were planning this, and so it came Aww. through real clear to honor him and all sure. those that have, that have gone before us to make this make this way, and people that have st you know stood for unity and peace. Oh yeah, the and ancestors. And for those to come, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that uh, the Turtle Woman Rising. I don't know if you've heard of. No, I haven't. I'm them, a group. I know of, about the Turtle. Um, oh, what's the group called? The Turtle. Okay, well, move on. <laughs> I'm yeah, having a brain a, fart. This is a drummer group. Um, we have Joe T. That's the spiritual director director of the Center for Sacred Studies to uh, do some prayers there. Um, let's see who else do we have. Uh, really fascinating is the uh, the the Water Song Line Council. Uh, the founding members of the Water Song Line Council will be there. Some of the members um, to. And if you look it up, it's just fascinating how they did this worldwide movement on water ceremony and thanking the water and uh, really feeling that water has a spirit, you know, and it can listen to us and it changes, you know, as we um, come together. And um, let's see, who else do we have? We have, oh, there's a big group coming down that are Haida dancers. And uh, they're called Haida Loss, and they are um, coming all the way from Seattle, um, about 23. And uh, people that are their relatives have found out, and they're all coming to oh. dance together as one, maybe for the first time even. Oh, that's wonderful. That they'll meet each other. Um, um, I, and there's going to be Pomo there. I know Clayton said he's coming. And Yes, uh, yeah. yeah. And there's another group of Pomo from down in your area as well, correct? Yeah, they're 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 going to dance together as one. I know that. So oh, sweet. Who knows how many will be of them? You know, which is totally awesome. And they're in both of the groups. Their their dance is totally prayer. You know, absolutely they're totally connected. It's not a powwow. It's it's total ceremony. And maybe right. some of us will experience ceremony. Ex uh, have the experience of ceremony for the first time. I I can wow. see that that. Um, yeah, so it's really beautiful how it's all coming together magically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, ah, you getting ready? Yeah. You know what energy. I found out, too? Uh, there is a guy, his name is Albert Kenyon. He's a flute player that's California Miwok, and he was on the phone mm -hmm. the other night. Um, and he... He told me that he had heard that, that 300 years ago that, that the people would gather in Katati. Oh. It was like a, so that's right by, you exactly. know. Exactly. It's Park. right around the corner, yeah. 
And the Katadi yeah. meant the medicine man. Wow, that's deep. Yeah. And to have so many different cultures now converging in the same place 300 years later. Yep. Oh, yeah. How lucky are we? Yeah. With waters from, I can't even, from all over the world. Wow. Egypt. Uh, the Amazon. Wow. Everywhere. Wow. Yeah, the grandmothers, uh, I know grandma, both of them have vials of water that they're bringing from all of the travels that they've done since 2004 when they first started and became a council, that they gather water wherever they went to, because they went to each other's homelands. Mm -hmm. And they would gather this in their in their prayers, you know, have this water gathered. Oh, so it's part of their cultural and uh, physical exchange of, of their own local yeah. gifts to each other. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Now, Mona, you know, Mona's involved in the, at the U.N. In fact, she just got back recently from, the, there's a, a water forum that they just had at the U.N. Mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Mona was a part of. And actually, one of the water song line women, um, Omule, was there as well. Um, she'll, she'll be at the ceremony, too. So, yeah, we have some people who are just really, really involved in the global waters. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, thank you, ladies, for what you do. I mean, it's it's such a healing thing, and God knows we need the healing as much as possible, and we need to build the unity in our communities, and this is one of those steps. Um, I don't know if you're... Well, there's several things happening uh, the same day that this is going on. The Willet ceremony is going to happen up later on in the day yes, for yeah. the Save Little Lake Valley, and then also yeah. there is the transition to permaculture event happening at the um, Hopland uh, Solar Living, Living Institute. That's a three-day event where Rob Hopkins is there and John Trudell and all these other um, speakers and people that are involved with the transition and permaculture movements. And they're going to awesome. be there for three days. It's a convergence. So that's wow. happening just up the road. And, and, I mean, how powerful is this area that we oh, can yeah. draw so many amazing people and minds to come to one thing, which is about our communities? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just a blessing. Yeah, yeah and unplanned on that day is the, um, which, which is really amazing, because when Susan had planned the day, and picked the day we didn't it wasn't known that it was like this columbus day oh that's right the actual day yeah which oh we say the, the day of the people you know the day of the people <laughs> the day. and now they're trying to change the name to indigenous people's day <laughs> yeah hello yeah, <laughs> yeah but i think you guys are actually facilitating that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's awesome and, and then i think like my, my um I, you know to to look at that day, to look at like a snapshot of the stars of what's happening with, with, um, and and uh, he says auspiciously that 11 a.m. is zero degrees Aquarius, um, <laughs> which is the water bearer, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just all these things that he put and and we have a Facebook page so people are welcome to kind of look at all the consciousness around water that's been happening and, and just beautiful things that people have been posting on it. And it's under um, the first annual Calling All Nations, a celebration of water and belonging. You can find it on Facebook. But it's just so beautiful, the people that have been sharing different things about water and mm -hmm. poems about water and prayers about water and, uh, you know, songs about water. Absolutely. I mean, it's beautiful yeah. over there. I just keep getting the posts, and it's just so nice and enlightening. Well, yeah. I'm a water sign, so I guess I have to be there anyway. <laughs> oh, you better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, ladies. Thank you so okay. much for your time. And we thank will you. see you all thank on you. Saturday. And again, the location that we're going to is the Sonoma State University in Rona Park. Yes. The campus and give us a, a cross streets and where to go in there as well, if we could, real quickly. Uh, well, location again, 101 Rona Park Expressway East, and it'll That's be the towards the very end where it runs into Petaluma Hill Road is the campus, oh, and you'll okay. go in to the Green Center parking areas, which is L, M, N, and O parking lots. 
Excellent. And it is a free event. You want to bring a blanket and a chair or a chair and your lunch and come and have some wonderful sharing that, that's going to be offered yeah. at this event. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll see Thank you then. You. Thank you. All right. Peace. Bye-bye. Right, bye. Wow. I just got energized just in the conversation. Sorry. So that's the water in me. Yes. But your water too, so. You should be feeling the flow a little. <coughs> in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> which, yes. which we won't talk about on the yes. radio. <coughs> okay. So. Yes. Okay. So the next, what, do, you well, want, do we want to take a quick break since it's <coughs> almost the top of the hour? I know you just took one. Oh <laughs> but um, yeah, we can do a quick break. Then I want two quick subjects and then we can get into Measure Rage. Is that Okay. Two quick subjects. And then measure H. Oh, yeah. We might want to mention there's a new donut shop in town. <laughs> Are the cops listening? <laughs> yes. Yes. What's it called again? I don't... Susie Q's? Susie Q's, yeah. Uh, all, the, all reports are that the good donuts are good. Step away from the donut. Um, well, if, if Susie Q's is listening and they want some uh, quiet... Uh, well, we've already Oh, we just did that, didn't we? Well, you know, it wouldn't hurt to get but a couple of Danishes and I don't donuts. know if we're allowed to do that, oh, but if we would not uh, turn down any donations <coughs> of coffee and Danish. Coffee. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Let's take so a break. we'll be back in a flash. You're uh, with on Lake no, he's, County... he's at home. Oh, that's right. That's our cat. Uh, you're on Lake County Magazine with Terry and... And Pete, the tax guy. Yay! And we'll be back in a couple minutes. You're listening to KPFC 88.1 FM in Lakeport and all around the lake. Let's get some good music going. Ah, uh, it's debatable. It's my choices. You know, that's always... Yeah, that could be one or the other. I hope yeah? they liked my music last week. Oh, yeah, and I did want to mention that the song that we <coughs> showed... The song that we started off with was uh, Trevor Lyon and Mendo Dope and uh, Ross Indio, and that was called Bridge in the Gap. Yes. And that's what this good music does, bridges the gap. If you say so. Okay, we'll be right back. KPFZ is grateful for the underwriting support of Angelina's Bakery and Espresso. Angelina's Bakery has a full espresso bar, fresh baked pastries, and a lunch menu with items made from scratch. They also offer ice cream, milkshakes, blended coffees, and Italian sodas. Open every day except Sunday. Angelina's Bakery and Espresso, 365 North Main Street in Lakeport.
<laughs> oh yeah, I'm always living in the red, baby. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. You know, you just can't seem to make those ends meet. Well, thank you for playing some upbeat music <laughs> to get the crowd going here. <laughs> yeah. well, for those of you that don't know, that was uh, War. War. Living in the red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was one of my favorite groups, by the way, from those days. Yeah, it was. They're a good group. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, let's see. Where are we? Okay. I want to address an issue. That's not an issue. Let's call this Pete Again? The, let's call this Pete the Tax Guy's editorial. Okay. On the state of the industries of Lake County. Okay, okay. Oh, so can we just translate that as Pete's rant? It's not a rant. Okay. It's, no, no, it's not a rant, folks. This okay. is uh, we actually had time on Tuesday morning, which was actually only yesterday. Feels like weeks. Oh um, yeah. We watched the board of supervisors meeting, and uh, surprisingly, Mr. Brown was there. S excuse me, Supervisor Brown. But that's another subject. Um, they had a presentation done by, and I apologize if this is not the correct term for their organization, the Napa it's Workforce. Workforce Napa, I'd like yeah. Right, and. Uh, the gentleman there did a very nice presentation on some reasonably current stats, statistics, abbreviations. Yes. And uh, I went to the website and I downloaded the, the, the uh, his PowerPoint presentation, what it was. And here's some interesting fact. This is not a biased statement. These are actual facts because I do like the wine industry for what it's done. But we have a tendency in this county to think that the wine industry is God. And so here's some stats I think everyone needs to be aware of uh, to put everything into um, perspective. Okay. According to the Napa Lake Workforce, who's done this analysis, and this is as of 2012, so it's extremely current um, analysis, the agricultural industry, and that includes forestry and fishing, it's not just the wine industry, <coughs> But it does not include our uh, lovely underground industry of cannabis. The forest, excuse me, the uh, agricultural industry provides only nine percent of the total jobs in Lake County. Now that's ranked third, mind you, uh, of all the industries. But they only provide nine percent of the overall jobs. They rank fourth in the county in the total number of jobs. They provide 1,190 jobs. Now, I do not know if that includes the seasonal uh, jobs or not. That was not discussed, nor is it in the overview. In the last 20 years, the agricultural industry has had a growth of 2.5% in the job market. That's over 20 years. 2.5% growth? Yes, in 20 years. No that's not way. per year. No that's way. the total growth. Are you serious? Yes, I am. No wonder now we got such a bad report. Now, here's part. something very interesting. Between 1993 and 2000, excuse me, let me rephrase that. In 19, from 1993 to 2006, the growth was 1.4%. However, from 93 to 2012, the growth was half of that, which means that from 2006 to 2012, the job market in the agricultural industry has decreased. <laughs> decreased, folks, not increased. Wow. They ranked in Lake County fourth in total gross payroll. And their projected growth from 2008 through 2018 over a 10-year period is only 2.7% growth. And so they're, they're not even projecting a 3% no. e increase over the next 10 years? And in this analysis, they put priorities in the, on each industry. And they did a point ranking, and I'm not going to take the time to explain that to you. <coughs> but it's based on their project, the growth, the prior growth, projected growth, what they're looking at, the standard of the industries. <laughs> they are only ranked fifth in priority in, on the job market in this county. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is that, I don't know about you folks, and I've harped on this last week. I usually harp on it on a lot of our radio shows about how the county lacks direction in its economic plan and how it doesn't have a real plan, as far as I can see, that really addresses the individual industries in this county, how they're going to create jobs, how they're going to attract jobs and businesses in here. But all they say, and this comes from the Economic Development Department itself, too, 
that says we need to concentrate on the wine industry. We need to concentrate on their needs and wants <coughs> of this county because that's where, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that's where our growth and our in our improvement in our economy is all based out of. We know something; these stats say otherwise. And this was presented to the board of direct uh, board of supervisors yesterday. And I did not hear a hell of a lot of questions being asked about these stats, nor any position about, well, no, that's wrong. This is what we're really doing. It doesn't exist, folks. No. So, well, you did interviews with all the supervisors, with the exception of the unnamed one. Yes. Who refuses to speak with us. Yeah, he doesn't like us. And, oh, gee, I wonder why. <laughs> I wouldn't like us either if I was at the receiving end of our well, tirades. <laughs> you got a good point. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway... In every case, not one of them said that jobs was a priority to them. No, and, they, we've, I, and I've joked about this where one said, well, my main concern is balancing the budget. That's all I care about. That's my job as a supervisor. Like, well, whatever. Really? But you're right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Denise Rushing did address the job market to a certain extent, saying they were making overtures to, at that time, Marymount and things like that. And she had some concern over that. Yeah. But the other one's like, it is what it is. It is what it is, yeah. But uh, the point is, though, everyone thinks the wine industry is the savior to this county. And based on these statistics, it's not. And I'm not, I have nothing against the wine industry, folks. I mean, I'm not against any industry that creates jobs and helps put a basis to our economic growth of this county. I'm, not, I'm, I'm pro-jobs. But the point is, though, you can't keep on saying the wine industry is our savior when the statistics absolutely show it isn't. And that we have to concentrate on other facets of, of industries. And the projections are showing that the professional industry, accountants, attorneys, doctors, architects, draftsmen, anyone that has, quote, a professional license, is going to be the most significant growth in this county over the next 10 to 20 years. I agree. It's a shame. So that's my um, kind of a rant. But as I'm just, I'm just what I notice is there's a huge opportunity for industry to come in here. Absolutely, because that is the biggest gap that we have. It right. seems. Well, they also they, during the uh, thing yesterday they said that warehouse and transportation had the biggest growth overall, which yeah. I, that would surprise me for yeah. Lake County. Well, you know. 20, the 20 is a corridor and a big link from the east to the west side. I understand so that. Yeah. It would make sense. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. <laughs> I knew um, that would make you gee, call. Gee, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I think um, to put those uh, statistics in maybe a, a clearer context, I think you have to remember that at the same time the wine industry here was increasing its acreage and, and workforce and all that, the pear industry was in a, a pretty sharp decline. <clears throat> uh, I think in that time period you mentioned there was, what, six years there? Yes. Two, yes, 2006 to 2012. Uh, we lost somewhere around 60% of the pear orchard acreage here in the county, and there had been six packing facilities here, and now we're down to two. Now, what, repla what replaced the pears? Um, I, I would say for the most part it was, well, it was, it was probably pretty evenly split, actually, between... Grapes and hay. Okay. Not walnuts? No, there, there hasn't been a big increase in walnut acreage. There's been a little little increase in plantings, but not, not that really significant. Right. Now, to be fair, and I'm sure you heard the meeting yesterday, They, uh, I think it was Matt that, uh, no, Alan, excuse me, that came up and said that I think they are now have, what, 38 wineries slash vineyards in the county up from the original 24 that they talked about. So there, there is growth in the wine industry. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. But they're saying our, our agricultural industry here is the bread and butter of Lake County. And it may be to a certain extent, but it doesn't show that and does not reflect that in the number of jobs it creates and has currently has. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know. The, the thing, you, again, you, you have to put a little context into the numbers here because, you know, people will look, they'll point to the, uh, the value of the wine grape crop here in Lake County and the, the you know which is always in the around 50 million dollar a year range okay mm -hmm. it's like that and that's completely overshadows what we're getting from pears which is in the 10 to 20 million dollar range annually and walnuts I think are down around 
five, maybe six million. Uh, anyway, um, the the thing that really kind of distorts that picture there is the fact that a lot of that fifty odd million dollars doesn't stay here in the county. You just took the words out of my mouth. Thank you. It's it's the value of the crop. Okay, and and that crop is being produced, and it's owned by people that don't live here. People like Brassfield and uh, Beckstoffer and Kendall Jackson right. and Woodbridge and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the big vineyard operations here, the really large scale ones, are run by out of county outfits. And and where we're really missing the boat here, as far as an opportunity in the wine grape industry goes isn't really on the production end, it's on the processing end. Agreed. Because no, no other county sends 90% of its crop out of county to be run Right. in the wine grape industry. <clears throat> Nobody else does that. We're the only ones to do it. We need to get that money from the processing here in the county. And, and they really they have to try to develop that part of the industry here more because that'll that'll bring more income, more jobs, and uh, a higher profile for our, our wine grape industry here. Because uh, and I would also think it would be a higher profit margin for the wineries, too, if they could do it here locally. Uh, yeah, it, you know, you would, you would think the economics would favor it with the, uh, you know, lower uh, land cost and the lower cost of doing business and, mm-hmm. and, and labor and all that. You would think the economics would work, but... Um, you know, when you've got when you've got all these big players who already have a uh, um, a system in place, you know, to do all this work, and it's not here. Well, you know, they're going to utilize what they have already rather than. You no, know. No, I, I agree, and I understand that from a business point of view. But you know, big businesses uh, like the wineries, you know, they need to give back to the community a little bit, and I think. Uh, maybe short term it would cost them some money, but long term it would probably be more more efficient for their bottom line number. And I think it would be show a great commitment to Lake County if they if they could be organized as a group to do that. Yeah, I think that's really where the focus of the of the county should be, not just you know expanding acreage here, but getting uh, that uh, processing money right. out of the deal. Right. And I realize all stats can be misread or or. Or, or read to your own interpretation, and and I realize it would be nice if we had stats for each segment of each industry, but we don't have them. But you know, I just get tired of hearing about the wine industry being the golden boy, and and it, all the ind- industries are basically being ignored. Yeah, and and uh, you know, another thing that kind of skews it is that there, all the crops have a different level of labor input to them, and the pear industry was about as heavy as you can get. Yeah. You know, that really provided fairly consistent employment for a, a, a pretty solid base of people that lived here, whereas a lot of the work that gets done in vineyards is done by migrant workers. Right. You know, so again, you know, you might have employees, you might have payroll and all that, but, you know, the question is, how much of that money is going to stay here? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. So, all another right. thing that has to be factored in. Cool. All right. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Before we run out of time, like we do every week, let's move on to Measure H. I will since, yes, okay. Um, last Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock, we had a town hall meeting at the uh, Clear Lake Youth Center <coughs> near Redmond, Redmond Park? Redbud Park. Whatever. Um yeah, and uh, it was organized initially by the Yes for Measure H committee, uh, and uh, we were allowed to participate to a certain extent uh, because it was a government building. <coughs> you know, and I'm not going to bore you the details of how the agenda was changed and how we didn't have a right to uh, speak uh, as, as... Don't exaggerate. Let's get it facts All right, you go. So otherwise you go they're going to come in and bully us. No one can bully me, dude. Um... Originally, it was going to be the Yes on Measure H committee doing a presentation. It was supposed to be a very neutral presentation. And then they were going to have questions and answers from the public. So then we requested, not we, but the No on Measure H committee requested that they be allowed to present their answers to the same questions that the Yes on H committee was going to give. 
knowing that they would not allow the no committee to give their own presentation this was all we asked for and then an opportunity to present our questions to be answered as well so we get there and we find out that oh well you know you can uh, do your stuff but you have two minutes to give all your information and do your questions and answers <laughs> well you miss a step there oh which step the step that uh Mike just did not want us participating, period, end of discussion. No, he had already given us permission to ask questions. Okay, but then the mayor stepped in because we requested the opportunity to ask the questions that we knew they didn't have on their list and provide the answers to the ones that were on their list. So she negotiated that with Mike Vandiver, who was running the town hall at the youth center, and he gave his okay to do that. Then when the time came, though, all of a sudden, they notify us at the last minute, oh, you have two minutes to make your, make your points. And we're like, okay, well, we have 15 questions here. How can we have them answered in two minutes? You can't. Okay. So what ended up happening was um, when he finished with his PowerPoint presentation, he tried to basically... Uh, roll over the fact that we were supposed to be ans answering the questions that he had presented, but unfortunately they changed the order of the questions, so we didn't have the questions, we weren't able to get the questions and the answers together uh, during that presentation. It, we were going to check, check off the ones that matched and just talk about the ones that didn't match, but none of our questions matched what their statements were, so basically we were shut out of that opportunity. Then the next opportunity came when he said, you know, now Peter, you can give your questions. Well, in two minutes, he had the chance to rattle off 15 questions. And then uh, the city manager was allowed to choose from those questions which ones she would answer. <laughs> or was capable of answering. And it was very few of those yes. that were answered. So that was the next thing. And then he had the nerve, when it was supposed to be all neutral and not taking sides, to make snarky remarks when people from the committee would ask questions and even said something to you about whether you were a Clear Lake resident or not. Yeah, I was asking a question <coughs> and he just looked at me and said, are you a Clear Lake resident? And I'm saying, no, but I'm a property owner. And it wasn't his place to ask that. That's he right. had no business interfering or moderating at all. That wasn't his job. His job was to pass the microphone and keep his mouth shut. But every time someone from the No Committee made a comment, he had a snarky remark to, to make afterwards, or he'd be confrontational like that. And to be honest, and put all things on the table, we do, do not live in Clear Lake, but we do own an investment property there. And because of that, we have a vested interest in the city and how the city spends our tax dollars. In addition, we shop there. I also have a $2,000 bill for the front end on my Mercedes, which is not drivable now because of the bad roads in Clear Lake. So I'm very interested in getting those roads fixed. Well, but I'm not interested in wasting our money. Let me interrupt for a second. It, it doesn't matter if you or I or anyone else lives in the city of Clear Lake or not. People drive those roads. They go down for special occasions, be it for eating, be it for recreational. They shop there. Yeah, we shop a major there all shopping the time. Area. So and their sales tax is going to go up to about 9.5% right. once this is said right. and done. And then, God forbid, that the lake tax gets voted in, that will take them up over 10%. Right. So the point is, folks, the, 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 I'll say Mike, not measure, yes, committee, because he doesn't represent the committee. No, and totally. the committee, you actually, I think, was embarrassed by his behavior. Uh, yes. <coughs> um, at least they one did person try to so. distance themselves. Yeah. Yeah. The point is, though, is he was trying to. Uh, redirect, which is a very good ploy in debating, mm -hmm. uh, off the facts that were being presented. Deflect. Deflect. That's the council word that they've been using that well, is basically the same thing. I've never been s politically correct or, or... No, I'm just saying yeah. that, as a matter of fact, that was that word originally came out by Gina, yes. council person, yeah. who <laughs> used it against Jerry Spittler, and then Joey Luis tried to use it on somebody else, so now this is a popular term That's in Clear word, Lake. Yeah. <laughs> so either way, the point is, it was not done in an unbiased manner, which I expected. I just didn't expect the snide remarks. Yeah, we knew that was Yeah, good. so. But here's, well, go ahead. You. Okay, so 
eventually we managed to get a lot of the questions out and a lot of them they could not answer or did not want to answer particularly interesting was the slide they presented that showed past salaries in the gas tax because our our argument is that the gas tax money was supposed to go for roads and now what is it 70 percent 70 percent of the gas tax goes to salaries for the city employees here's a question for you folks and then i'll let my wife continue when you look at when you're budgeting uh, how do i say this anyway do you consider benefits like insurance and retirement as part of your compensation package? Yes or no? I would. Of course. I want to hear what they have to say, but yeah. you continue now. Okay. So um, we got most of the questions out. The other committee members of the no committee were very good about getting them out. Unfortunately, my husband got a little hot-headed about the situation. Yes, and I did. was not able to continue in his presentation due to the um, interruptions that were being made by Mr. Vandiver. So and the comments that no one heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the stuff that he was saying off the microphone, okay, and the way he was treating people. Uh, if they couldn't get their, like Roy Simons, when he couldn't get his question or his statement out, he had to say, do you have a question? No, well, maybe I just want to make a statement. Are I allowed to make a statement? So he was being very bullish. He was not allowing people to speak their minds. It's not what I imagined a town hall to be at all. It was more like Mike Vandiver's version of Measure H. Yeah, I expected a, a third-party person to kind of control it to a certain and extent. And I also found the city manager to be a little testy as well. Well, she was actually had to answer questions that she did not want to answer. Mm -hmm. And that was very obvious. Well, when I looked at the slide of the gas tax and they had salaries and there was nothing there from the time the gas tax was started, I think in 2009 uh, or 10, until 2014, the only salary that showed up there was 2014. Well, they've yes. been taking salaries out of the gas tax since the very beginning. And yet they didn't disclose that on the slide. Well, I thought that was very deceptive. They d First of all, they didn't disclose salaries for those prior years. But the, for the two thousand, yeah. yeah, and for the two thousand fourteen projection for their budget, for the approved budget, the slide did not include all of the revenues coming in for the gas tax. They only had showed four hundred twenty odd thousand when they're anticipating about six hundred odd thousand, and they only reported salaries as as the as um, from the measure yes point of view. They only looked at salaries, and they didn't address total compensation. And that's what really bothered me, because I was told by Mike Van Vanderweer? Vanderweer. Vanderweer. Oh, comp uh, uh, benefits has nothing to do with salary. We have no control over that. Benefits are dictated by the state, They're by government. They're still part of the pay structure. But, but benefits aren't dictated by the government. Payroll well, taxes. Well, not health benefits, but payroll taxes not that, retirement and Social benefits. Security. And not retirement that's, that's benefits. Right, that's what I'm getting at, is that he was making these really st oddball comments. And he's a self-employed contractor. Who so probably he, hasn't got a clue anyway. But he should know about payroll. He should know about cost control. Anyway, my point here, folks, <gasps> is that... That's if he's following the rules. From what we've heard, he doesn't like well, to do that either. I, I don't want to go there. Yeah. Uh, all I'm getting at is that when you're looking at payroll costs, folks, you have to look at not just the salaries and wages, but the overall cost of the benefits and payroll taxes that you t come out of your pocket with. <laughs> and they refuse to address that. So when I said that Sa that total compensation equaled 70% of the revenues coming in off the gas tax. He started arguing with me that I was wrong. And his numbers, first, were not correct. And then, second, his analysis or his understanding of compensation was totally off base. And he started making some really snide remarks to me, which I admit I got upset because I'm not used to dealing... Uh, I'm used to dealing with professionals and, and having personal opinions off the side and deal with facts. And when I get personally attacked, it doesn't sit well with me. So Yeah, but that's their tactics. The I bullies know. on the Yes Committee are what's ruining their whole city is because of the behavior of right. these gentlemen. Exactly. So anyway. I use that gentleman term loosely. Yes. And so the presentation was done. <coughs> I'll let my wife get more of the of the of the uh, positive, negative about it. But w one of the other things that really bothered me was that uh, the engineer, uh, Bob, I think is his name, looks like a very nice gentleman. Looks like he knows his stuff. He, he, he wasn't getting involved in politics. He was just straight stating the facts, which was what I appreciate. But someone asked, he mentioned in one of his rebuttals or his comments that, look, you guys got to understand, our staff has not had a payroll increase in five or seven years. And I questioned him on that by saying, 
Well, no, excuse me, let me rephrase. Then the uh, city manager, uh, Joan Felipe, kind of said, well, that's not quite accurate. Uh, we've had some increases. And I'm like, well, how can you state there's been no increase in payroll when your total city payroll has jumped 20 percentage points in three years? Yeah. And she kind of. I thought that was so deceptive the way she, she did and that. And she was hemming and hawing and said, well, we, our staff has not had any cost of living or COLA increase. Which is like a 5% or less increase, well, right? In five years. And the average over the five years has been, uh, I don't have my numbers in front. I think it was 5.2% over five years, mm -hmm. not one year. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you telling me that you've had no staff increase, then tell me how your payroll is increased so drastically. And she finally, she was really nervous. Her tone of voice was nervous anyway. She was not happy you were asking those questions. No, of course, no one else, anyway. Yeah. And she finally said, well, we have our, our step increases. And I'm like, okay, so you're telling me that if I have a, uh, I have a year anniversary and I get a pay increase based on negotiated whatever, that's not an increase in payroll? Well, it is, but it's a stepped increase. It's not, I'm like, look, call a spade a spade. Oh, my God. Did your salaries go up, yes or no? Yes. Did they go up 20 percentage points in three years? She refused to answer. So I said, tell me how the hell you're telling everyone that you've had no increases in five years and your staff deserve it when your payroll is going up 20 percentage points. Not 20 percent, folks. 20 percentage points from 50 percent to 70 percent. Because the overall, excuse me, the overall cost of payroll and benefits to the city of Clear Lake represents seventy percent of their revenues, eighty percent. Excuse me. How do you how do you run a, a, a city like that? Then she said, "Well, we have costs that we can't control, like insurance." Excuse me. Uh, hello. Have you ever heard of uh, renegotiating your insurance? You ever heard about putting a pay freeze on stepped increases? Hello. And then with Affordable Care Act coming in, they damn well better switch over there. Everybody, including the city council members, who get about ten thousand dollars a year in benefits, right? Uh, more than that. Okay. So to me, it's mismanagement. They've already taken the gas tax and gutted that, so they haven't fixed any, hardly any roads well, with that. Let me address that. I then addressed why. The payroll cost that's allocated to the gas tax. And again, gas tax brings in anywhere from six hundred dollars to six hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to the city of Clear Lake. That ain't chump change. I said, why in, at the year ending 2011, 50 percent uh, of the gas revenue, 50 percent went to payroll. Three years later, 70 percent goes to payroll. Why such an increase? Why are you taking money that's meant for the roads? for improvements and repairs, and spending it on more salaries. And right out of the, of ba uh, the mouth of Babe said, well, we lost funding in other areas, so i got to pay for our salaries somewhere. Exactly. So, folks, here's my point. The city is asking for a 1% percentage point increase in sales tax to, for road maintenance and improvements. On a city that has about 60 to 65% level of poverty or below poverty cost of uh, living standard. Yet, she admittedly, on a public record, in this tape, go to our website and look at the yep, video. It is on our Lake County Magazine website. Well, we lost funding, so uh, w we have to pay for our salary, so we're taking that at gas tax money. Really, folks? Never mind the fact that she left her last city job at the town of Colfax, I believe it was, because she refused to take a cut in salary. Yes. So she came to Clear Lake, where she figured since they'd already been robbed by redevelopment funds, that the council and everybody else in the town are a bunch of idiots, and they're going to sit back while she feathers her little golden parachute nest, because the word is that she's going to resign next right. year. So, you know, this is a scam. Uh, the people clearly like are being scammed, and we're really sorry that there's so many people buying into this because mostly it's the big businesses and the people with the money that are uh, going for this plan. Um, and it's just really sad that this is how they choose to treat the citizens of their city. And by the way, barely any of the city employees actually live in the city of Clear Lake. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Hello. Sorry to double dip. You're, no, you you're allowed. Okay. Um, hey, you guys have got to look on the bright side. If they pass Measure H, it lessens the chances that they'll pass the uh, follow-on measure uh, to on, Measure E. On the lake, yeah, but yeah. you know there's a lot of people that really want that measure to pass in Clear Lake, and they're saying, you know, why should we pass this tax when we want to see the lake get cleaned up? Because they're under the impression it's going to actually clean the lake. 
So yeah, I think we, we need we know, we know better. Won't. Right. But yeah, we, I actually, actually, I get a feeling that one's going to fail anyway because it doesn't sound like they've fixed any of the. Well, that's what I was going to say. I, I thought we should get Mr. Farrington on here and find out if they've changed anything or anything's improved since the last time around. Uh, I, I don't think significantly. From what I understand, they don't have a coherent spending plan for it. They haven't decided how what the Quagga program is going to look like, and that was a huge sticking point last time. But getting back to Measure H here, um, I watched your video. Uh, that was pretty interesting. Um, I was really kind of uh, amazed at the uh, color that Joan Felipe's cheeks turned when she was asked about her uh, built-in pay raises. Yes. Thank you. That was, that was pretty <laughs> impressive there. But the other thing that just completely floored me was that I know that Bob Galush has been the city engineer for a long, long time, and he was apparently unclear on what types of construction and road repair equipment the city had. That's because he's a part-timer. The person who could have answered that question was Doug Heron, and he was not in attendance. Uh, which is, is, is mind-boggling in itself. Thank you. Thank you. But see, the guy who actually is supposed to be fixing the roads isn't involved. Right. But but still, I get, the city engineer doesn't know what the basic equipment that they have at hand there to you know do road repair work. He goes, well, I think they got a backhoe, and I think they got a grader. Beyond that, I don't really know. Yeah, my impression of him is that he just comes in when he's needed to make appearances, and that he works out of his office in Napa or wherever else he's based, and is on call. I mean, I don't think he has a grip on what's going on there well, to begin well, with. Well, clearly he doesn't if he doesn't know what tools they have to do the work that exactly. they're supposed to be doing. But the, the other thing that really floored me was that, you know, the, uh, the grading and the repair of all the, uh, the dirt roads, yep. um, which is, you would think would be a big component in this, seems yep. to have been whittled way, yep. way down into, well, we're going to try to fix, do all the miscellaneous road repairs and grade every dirt road every year on $150,000. Oh, they're so full. And we're going to cross our fingers to see if that works. But my question is, if you've got a grader and you've got a staff who's getting paid already, why the hell don't they have someone on that grader fixing those roads now today? Thank you. Good That's question. what we've been asking them. That's what the it, gas tax was supposed to pay for. Well, how much your diesel are you going to run through in a day running the grader? No, I mean, that's your, that only, your only expense, really. Okay. Yeah, Phil, and I know you know this answer that my, or my comment because you're a obviously very versed and intelligent young man. The point is, as an accountant and having worked in major corporate world, I can make numbers appear any way they need right. to appear. And when it comes to a cost analysis, depending upon what side of the fence I'm on, I can make it look really, really good or really, really bad. And the way they do numbers, they overstate the actual cost of, of doing a project, like in this case, Absolutely. just grading roads. Because they could take, well, we have to take it to appreciation in consideration. We got this, we could take into consideration. We got overhead staff, we got ally to that. So they make the numbers a lot worse than what they really are. Because what you want to do is, that you've just stated, address the actual hard cost expenses to do that. And you're right, it's diesel fuel and the person who's on staff already. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering exactly what their public work staff spends their time doing. That's a good question. You know, um, it's apparently not, you know, spent fixing roads, which oh, yeah. and, is really and weird because there's there's currently no plan to spend any money on the roads. And God forbid you ask them for a plan. Okay, we thought we had something in hand. It was the, uh, what do they call it, the PMS report that was done by, and I love that name, that was done by a, an engineering firm in 2011. Um, and it was supposed to give priorities to different roads and grading uh, numbers, you know, as far as what level the uh, decay they were in. And they were originally, when we first started looking into this, they were going to use that as their guide in order to figure out what priorities the roads are coming in, right? Well, now that whole thing has just been totally changed up. And guess what? They don't have any plan. Their plan is to sit down and have town meetings with the citizens and determine which roads are the priority. Of course, they have a long history of not listening to the citizens on the city, Clear Lake City Council anyway. So I don't know how they think that's going to work. But basically, uh, they want to have a series of meetings with the citizens to prioritize the road system, which means that going into the tax, we have no 
plan to spend the money anywhere at all. Yeah, there's there's a whole lot of questions I've got about this deal. And one thing that really I don't understand the logic of is why they didn't put a sunset clause on it. <laughs> uh, because they say that the that the roads never stop needing to be fixed. Well, Bob, Therefore, there could be no sunset. Bob said we need $17 million to repair the roads. Right, yeah, I understood that, that they had that big a backlog, which I'm, I'm kind of questioning that, that number, actually, because if they're just talking about repaving the or maintaining the uh, the paved roads, that, you know, and not doing any new paving, right. 17 sounds like kind of a lot. But no, he was talking about the total amount of 60 roads, and if they paved every road, I believe that right. was where that number came from. <clears throat> Uh, okay. Which is not going to happen under well, any yeah, condition. I mean, well, most of those roads are going to get chip sealed. You know, they're yeah. not going to get completely yeah. reconstructed or anything like that. Now, there's another thing. Ed Roby has come out and said that the Sierra Club approves this plan. Well, what Ed Roby's not realizing, and what you may agree with or not, is my understanding is that all those aerial photos showed phosphorus coming in off the dirt roads. In, from Clear Lake into the marsh and other places around the south end to the lake. Now, if that's correct... It isn't. That's a, that's a straight-up lie. <sighs> that's a straight-up lie. Anyone can go on the county GIS system and confirm that for themselves. They can go to NASA and the um, Okay, so you're saying that, that, isn't, that, that there is no runoff effect from the dirt roads? There's nothing that the satellite photos uh, show that would support any of that that suggestion. No, okay. nothing. Zero. So you don't, uh, be, uh, taking the satellite thing out of the equation, you don't think the dirt road runoff provides any kind of issues for the lake? No, and, I, and I'm not saying that. I'm saying that uh, if you go out and grade those roads, it's not going to make any significant Well, difference. that's my point. I want to I want to show that these roads are affecting the lake, and that grading is not going to change that. Well, they, here's the other thing that, that's hilarious about Ed's statement about this thing is that he's claiming that, uh, you know, you need to put more money into code enforcement so you can crack down on uh, backyard pot growth because they are a significant oh, God, environmental Ed, what happened problem. Now, here's the, Ed Roby, the guy who for years and years and years on the Board of Supervisors would vote against DEA funding to go into the national forest right. and go after people that had... Where the real toxic issue is. Yeah, where they had these thousands and thousands of plants growing, mm -hmm. and, you know, and there was no environmental, you know, regulations or anything going on. And he was voting against that money when, um, you know, he was in office on the board, and now he's Mr... Oh, pot plants are bad even when you've only just got a few in your backyard. I, know. And residential it, I don't know what happened to him. He's done a 360 or 180 basically on his whole attitude lately. I'm not sure why. Well, I would like to ask Ed Roby, where does the environmental impact of backyard pot grows in the city of Clear Lake on the lake fit into the overall scheme when you put it in the, uh, the context of what is ordinary gardening and lawn maintenance? and the thousands and thousands of domesticated animals that live in the city. And What's all their the, environmental impact on Yeah, the and all the Roundup they're using on their gardens and all the crap right. that I they're mean, using. Come of on. course. It okay. Just, that's well, ridiculous on the face of it. We got another call. It's sure. been holding for a long time, so we're going to have to go. But yep. feel free to call back if there's time. Bye. Thanks, Phil. Bye. Hello, you're on the air. I'm going to double dip, but I'm going to wrap it up. You again. I totally agree. On, I've been advocating this for years. Asphalt is a pain in the asphalt. It's <laughs> too much to maintain. The oil residues that come off from that are way worse for the lake yep. than any grading can do. And graders are easy to do. Listen, we need to keep our feeder stream roads correct and quick so we don't have damage. But when you, most of us live, when you get off the feeder stream road, a quarter to a half a mile. My God, on the North Shore, if you go a half mile, you're back in the Mendocino National Forest. Yeah, but in Clear Lake, it, it's it, not You like want to get there quick, but then once you get there, hey, can we just grade these Volkswagen-sized potholes out? <laughs> it, it takes three passes a year. Right. It's really simple. Right. Graders don't break down that much. Trying to break down what? all the regrading and everything that it takes to maintain. <laughs> but the pavement is a, it's a huge problem. Exactly. And, well, and it, it's the, the definitely something they need to look uh, into in, as far as the environmental impact, and I don't think there's been an EIR yeah. done on this. So, And there, there is going to be a little bit of oil droplets and uh, tire waste on the 
on the um, the, the graded roads, but it's going to be minimal impact on the lake. It's mm-hmm. natural red dirt that's mm-hmm. already here that washes into the lake every time it rains on every hill around here. Mm-hmm. And if the roads are properly graded, there is less runoff than there is leaving them in the disrepair that they're at. Right. And graders cost so much less than all the... Oh, Peter, crunch the numbers. Um, how much of a percentage is Caltrans of uh, employment here? Because well, they've just been waging a war on that Vietnam Memorial Highway, haven't they? Yeah, Looks uh, like uh, a war zone. Yeah. Cutting down our trees, taking them away, chicken, chipping them up. They're dis- what are they doing with all, all our big old heritage? Uh, they're dropping the chips off on Highway 29 just before you get up to Lakeport, and you can come and get some for your garden. Yay! That's <laughs> be- beautiful. Because you know what? That big tree might fall on the highway. Mm-hmm. And it could. Well, I mean, they have a reason the for doing that, and I'm not against it. It's also fire control, because they're f- creating a wider fire break if they if they cut mm. back on the side of the highways. You We've got to protect ourselves. You can leave the big ourselves. trees, though, the heritage trees. Oh, those I are the agree. ones that usually don't burn But up. those are the ones that usually fall on the road. So we've had four trees fall in our in our yard over the past mm. year or so. But let's go back to grading. Okay. And definitely... Um, misaligning these funds is um, I, I believe they're, they could be up on charges. Well, I, this, no, this because it doesn't say it, you know what, it would need a heavy duty analysis. It does say in the gas tax that they can be used for research and development and some other salary based options and so that's what they're justifying what they're doing and, and to prove that it is uh, illegal or whatever would take a bigger analysis than we're yeah. prepared well, to do. And I have a feeling they're not out there really working hard at doing this road well, analysis. Well, this is the problem. They're lazy, and they won't do an analysis until it gets passed. Well, Alan, if, I don't know if you... Like, s- they'll never <coughs> deal with the roads again. You yeah. know, if it doesn't get passed, you know there won't be, ever be any road work done right. ever, nope. ever again. The city I manager... Get your own grader. Oh, yeah. my Hang God. Hang on. The city Such manager... Uh, a good job. Yeah. Go ahead, Pete. Okay. The city manager made a comment about how um, all these funds are going to be audited. Um, on an annual basis. So when I had the opportunity of asking one more question, I said, can you please explain to me, I said, is the audit done by a third-party CPA firm? And Or internally. And when does it occur? And Joan spoke up and said, yes, we use an outside CPA firm. They're very credible, blah, 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 blah. And I said... And not like you, local one. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not well, I'm not CPA, but that's all right. <laughs> um, but... Uh, I said, okay, and when is it scheduled? What what month you cl- your year cl- ends on June, the month of June, so when do you actually have the audit? And this is what I was waiting to hear. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, we've had a turnover and lack uh, um, uh, uh, st- um, a staff in, 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 in finance, and um, um, well, we're a little bit backlog in our in our work, and we don't know when we're going to be able to schedule the audit because we got to catch up our work first. In other words, is that like, what she said? We're yes. not even capable of turning over our records right now. Exactly, uh-huh. because yet they have massive <laughs> salaries in the finance department and her department, and they don't have time to keep to keep their records current. Yeah, we're getting the pay raise, but we can't keep track of it. And here's another deception: <laughs> uh, when this thing first hit the the, um, the council for approval, uh, the statement was, was made that the funds by Mr. Chuck Leonard, a former mm-hmm. council member, that the funds were going to be overseen b- by the Board of Equalization. Well, well, we did our research, and guess what? The Board of Equalization only oversees the fund as they go into the state's coffers. Yeah, okay, that, when they, they're, they're distributed, not at all. When they are distributed back to the city, no one is no. watching, but the city council. It's not, it's not the equalization board. And job they're not that. watching. They're watching with their eyes closed because they trust everything that the city manager does implicitly. Uh, so it's, Clear Lake's in big trouble if this thing gets a, gets approved because they don't have a plan. Now I also ask the question: If this thing fails, is this the end of the world? Is this going to be the only time that you can address the roads? And guess what? The answer was no. This is not the end of the world. So why don't they just? Instead of rushing this thing through, now they're going to waste twenty-eight thousand dollars because it's on the ballot already. They can't retract it all by it. itself. <laughs> and so they got money wasting on a bet that they're making that this thing is going to pass, and it isn't going to pass because the people don't trust their leadership in Clear Lake. And you know why not sit, get the get the committee back together, and sit down and go through the things that they know now from the people that they don't like. Fix it. 
I don't know if they can amend these things uh, before they hit the ballot or if they can put it on the ballot again. If it, if it fails, they can just put it on the ballot again in June, which is a regular election time, and it won't cost hardly anything. So we hope to see that the voice of reason does prevail and the people clear like realize what they're dealing with. I know that's asking a lot. but Speaking of the voice of reason, I heard you talking earlier about you're going to have one one one. one, one Either of you are going to be missing here in like two weeks. Peter's going to be missing, yeah. Um, bring weeks. in Terry Spiller. She's the vo she's one of the only. You're the second the person that clearly. said that. Oh my gosh, I'll ask her, but she's very shy sometimes, so yeah, she I may mean, or may but, not want to do it. But, but I'd love she, to work she, with she's her. She's one of the, the voices of reason that I hear. And that's it, true. Yeah, that's, that's why true. she's on the fringe of the politics because she's real. Exactly. She's not trying to use it as her. I mean, hey, those are great jobs if you can get them. Yep, exactly. They pay well. Oh, not the city council. They only get a stipend every year. And then they get full insurance yeah. policy. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and so makes it worthwhile. Recall, I'm glad that Frank Riveros did not happen. Yep, but Rob what? Brown's recall needs some help, folks. We need some petitioners. So okay, that's what I was going to ask. What's yeah, the they need to go the and um, contact and them, uh, the committee people. Bob Blackmore is one of them. So. And what's the other status on our illustrious supervisor in his recovery? Oh, he was at the meeting yesterday, so I guess he's feeling better. It's amazing Surprised how, to how see. Efficient heart surgery can be now. Well, when you have a stone heart, it's easy. To get him right back on the board and doing yep. probably the same. When you policies. have a stone heart, it's really easy to fix that. We got another caller. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, it's Bimini Bobby Bud. How hey, Bobby. Today? I'm good. How are you? Okay, thank you. Last week, Peter did such a great job. I called in saying, well, if he had a problem with the time bank, we should start a high time bank. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw, um, I've been noticing, I wanted to mention last week about all these funds, and I mentioned that from the beginning about where is it all going, like the E and the H, and it's all for salaries. And I got to say, when you keep going on about this, people are going to get the idea and open like 20 more towns in between here and Middletown, trying to make a <laughs> fortune like that. Right. That's well, Calcium. unfortunately, they're all going to go bankrupt because there just isn't enough financially to sustain. When the police department employees start going on their retirement packages, that's when the city's going to feel yeah, it. I predict that the city of Clear Lake in the, in, within five years is going to have to do either a serious moratorium on on cost factors or they're going to file bankruptcy. And if Lake County was smart, they'd step in and start helping the city run the city and provide some kind of services that would help the city in some way. I'm not sure how, but if they get involved now to help them stay afloat, they won't have to have them as a bur burden later right. on. That's what I'm worried about. In the Bahamas, everybody just pitches in and fixes their road. Hello. Exactly. Thank you. To a mysterious government. Hello. And yeah, well, in, in, in the other places I've lived, you pay it in your property taxes, and then it's just automatically done. Now, here's a perfect example of waste of county tax dollars. Riding in this morning on our road, Point Lakeview, they are completely redoing that road. That road had no potholes, period. Had a few little patchy spots, but it wasn't anything couple major. couple cracks here and there, but nothing Certainly major. not worth doing an entire resurfacing on Point Lakeview Road. I know that Rob Brown's trying to keep his constituents happy, but this does not make me happy when I know that that road was in good condition to begin with, when there's so many that need it worse. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, they go by the most valuable tax returns. Yeah, something. because it goes through the Riviera and Jacob Bay and all that. And I have to mention, I love uh, Peter's story last week about his astral projection experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can read about that in uh, Swami Prabhu Pada's book about easy journey to other planets. And I studied Kriya Yoga a long time, and I can call in instead of the lake report with the casual sea report. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, All right, Robert. Man. Take care. Oh, uh, yeah. So, um... Did we have more to add? I mean, there's well, so much more in this more. Measure H well, thing just, that just the, uh, so ridiculous. In regards to pay requests, you just mentioned about county waste of money, and I want to reiterate this to our listeners. <clears throat> um, Sheriff Rivera was on um, Herb Guerrero's show on Saturday, and we heard that Monday morning, or at least I did. You did. Oh, that's right, I did, because you stayed home. That's right. Um, and the sheriff was talking about the Citizens Committee. That's not what I'm, this conversation is about. But he said, you know, I'm also involved in the negotiations for the sheriff's union, or whatever, the deputy sheriff's union. And he said, I support them. They have not had a pay increase in seven years. No county employees had a pay increase in seven yeah, years. Well, folks, it's the exact same thing. They haven't had a COLA increase. 
But if you look Hola's at the cost of living allowance, and it's supposed to be done every year based on the cost of living and the whole in, in, in financial index, and so it's a minimal, minimal amount. It's like one or two percent. Right. So average. it's been frozen due to economic restraints or whatever you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, right. So, but the point is, though, guess what, folks? They are still getting their stepped. Increases exactly. So don't I, feel sorry for them. Well, I'm not saying I don't want to upset any. I mean, I I love law enforcement and I appreciate. Well, it's not what just law do. enforcement; it's all county fire employees. department. I fr- appreciate what they do. They risk their lives every freaking day, so they deserve every penny they should get. But the rest of them, no. Don't no. try to pull the wool over our eyes. The point is, tell the truth. Tell all of the facts. Don't hide the facts. Yes, you've not had a cola increase. Oh, well, you're lucky you got a job because a lot of us don't. And the fact is that Joan uh, Felipe gets a higher salary and benefits than most any city her size okay. since, in the surrounding since, area. Since you brought that up, I, I did analysis off the state database, and these salaries are current as of 2012. I did a, a an analysis based on city population between 10,000 and 20,000, because clearly has approximately 15,000, so they're right in the middle of the road on that. City of Clear Lake City Manager's total compensation ranks 34th out of the 83 cities that meet that criteria. However, the 33 cities above Clear Lake all are from large metropolitan areas like Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, the Orange County area. So even though they may be the same size population, they're, um, they are obviously have a higher cost of living standards, et cetera, et cetera. So she actually is the number one paid city manager of what I'll call small town cities. And in the population base of 15,000 people, over 60% are poverty level, level and below. Correct. And she does not live in the city of Clear Lake. Uh, correct. So, so why are we paying this woman? She has cost us money for outsourcing jobs. She doesn't support local businesses. Obviously. She doesn't um, want to see things done in a proper manner. She's willing to gamble $28,000 on an election they're going to lose. So I just don't understand how she justifies the salary she's getting. She doesn't have to. And, 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 yeah, she does. She has to justify to the citizens of that city. Okay. She did not approve her own salary. The city I understand council. that. And, and honestly... That's the council's mistake. Of course it is. But that doesn't justify the fact that she's getting paid more than she well, should. Well, I think... And the subject was brought up about her taking a salary cut, and she said she would be willing to consider that. No, she said she'd take it under advisement with the council. Okay, she but didn't they're say not going to recommend that anyway. That's well, true. yeah. Yeah, and I no, give John that's full. That's my rant. I'm getting upset. I know. I give John full kudos for standing up and saying that. John Brosnan, yes. who got up and said, "I took a pay cut to be able to keep people working in my job and business in Clear Lake, and why can't you?" Right. I think the folks, uh, the the story, the moral of the story is those who are in business understand the sacrifices we make in a down economy to save our employees' jobs. That means we personally take a pay cut. And John went on record saying he's making very, very little profit, if any, on this big job in Clear Lake because he's employing, keeping his people employed. And another contractor got up and said, kudos to you, um, when he started challenging John on his comments. So, unfortunately, government has to be like private enterprise. It has to understand cost free or payroll freezes, benefit freezes, renegotiations of its contracts, and figure out a way to survive in today's economy. And Joan doesn't want to do that. Exactly. And unfortunately, we're out of time again. Oh, jeez. I know. It just goes so we fast. Have a, we have another hour. No one's around today. Uh, <laughs> I don't think the people waiting for folk scenes are going to be happy about that. Uh, fair enough. One last comment on the, on the parting roads, folks. Tuesday is October 15th. If you have not filed your personal or limited liability company tax return, that's your last time to do it by midnight. And it does not matter if the government shut down. You still have to file. Postmark has to be there. Yep. Okay, and the other thing is we want to thank whoever got the website back working again here at kpfc.org. And uh, streaming is available now through that website. You could always get there through live.365.org or whatever it's called. Live365.com. or com. Dot com. Whatever. Okay. So you can still stream. Everything's back to normal now as much as it can be here at KPFC. And um, good fundraiser they had the other a week or so ago. I don't know if you guys talked talked about about it. it. Okay, so 
So everything's caught up, and we'll catch up with you next week. Peter will be here next week. And if anybody's Sorry. interested in uh, helping me co-host for the next two weeks, please send me a message on our Facebook page, Lake County Magazine, and let me know. And um, if not, you can reach us at our offices, 701-6416. So thanks so much for listening, folks, and we'll see you all next week. This is Lake County Magazine with Terry Larson. And Pete, the tax guy. And you're on KPFZ 88.1 FM in Lakeport and all around the lake. Okay. Catch up with you next week. See and you we're going to listen to a little Stevie Culture, one of my favorite new songs. Have a great one. Get away because one.